I Ball Python Storm has been having an issue with her enclosure. I don't know what it is, but she's really trying to escape it. Now, when I pull her out, she doesn't run off from me. However, she doesn't like being in the enclosure. Something in there is bothering her. Last week, she ate a mouse. So she's a mouser. She's eating mice on a regular basis once a week. She got a little bit smaller, so I don't know what happened there. Maybe she got compacted and she couldn't really push out. She did leave me a surprise today. It was brown. She left me that surprise, and we're going to try to figure out what's wrong with her to try to resolve this issue quickly and efficiently. What is up, squad? It's your boy Vega from Mutated Balls coming at you with another video. Okay, so we understand Storm is not having a good time in her enclosure. She wants to escape. So what do we have to do to figure it out? My smallest ball python, Storm, has been down here in the basement for quite a while. Now, I've watched Striker and I've watched Joker grow over time. Those are two males. She's in the middle of those two males. So I think that's the reason she's trying to escape her enclosure. However, I'm not sure. So I have to take the precautionary measures to figure out why. Now, I have Shere Khan and Harley Quinn upstairs stairs which they're doing great they're growing at an enormous rate however storm is refusing to grow she's refusing to eat on a regular basis she'll eat once a week however she's a hatchling she's like two months old she shouldn't be eating once a week or even three months old she shouldn't be eating once a week she should be eating once every four days that's what the the norm is for hatchlings or, or small young juvenile ball pythons however at this point something is really truly wrong so I'm gonna go ahead and go to the store tomorrow I'm gonna pick up veterinary grade disinfectant I'm gonna go ahead and clean out the enclosure change the bedding we're gonna get our all new bedding I'm gonna clean everything in the enclosure make sure it's spotless crisp clear nothing left it might be an infection internally but we're gonna find out it's only been about a week since she ate last so I'm okay at this point I'm, I'm in an okay position. She ate a mouse last week. She's doing great, but she just wants to escape her enclosure. So either there's one of two things happening here. She's either really hungry or she doesn't feel safe. So we have to figure out why she doesn't feel safe. So tomorrow, I'm going to go pick up the stuff. I'm also going to pick up a mouse and see if I can feed her. If I can feed her and she goes into her hide and she stays cool and calm and collected, she's good to go. She was just hungry. However, if it's more than that, we have to relocate her to a different location within the home to find out what is happening with Storm. I know a lot of times things like this you experience, right? And it could freak you out. It could make you think it's something else. So overthinking the situation is not going to help. First things first, try to feed her. If she doesn't eat, then you know there's an issue. She won't eat my rats. So obviously there's an issue. She needs to eat mice. We got to check it out. Or we got to go soft furs. Now, if we go soft furs, they're going to be a little bit more expensive. However, to save her life, I can wean her off soft furs. I can buy a bushel of like 10. Just hold on to them. Freeze them if I need to. And then I can just constantly feed her uh, frozen Todd at that point just to keep her alive. However, I do want to wean her off the softwares if she is addicted to softwares or if she does genuinely like them. However, sometimes you just can't. So I'm okay with not being able to. So that means I have to create my own little setup for African softwares and try to breed them. Now, overthinking the situation will never help you. Overthinking the situation might even harm you at this point. So it's good to take the precautionary measures, but take it one step at a time. So let me go feed her. Let me find out what's happening with her and then move forward. What I noticed with Harley Quinn is she'll climb the whole length of the tank. I have a 40 gallon breeder for her. She'll climb the whole length of the tank and knock when she's hungry to let me know to signify that she's trying to escape. She's trying to go look for something to eat. However, at this point right now, I kind of got it down packed, especially with bringing my own food supply for them. And I kind of understand what's going on. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave Harley Quinn to herself, feed her whenever she's hungry, let her enjoy her life. But Storm, we need to really work on. So we have to take it one step at a time. So I'm going to go buy a frozen thawed mouse a little earlier in the morning. Pick one up, bring it to her, try to feed her out. If it's frozen thought, I gotta wait a couple days, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. And then we're gonna feed her out and then see what happens. Usually it takes about four hours for me to defrost, so I'm planning on setting up for a whole four hours before I can feed her. So it might not take two days, but it'll take some time to get that frozen thought thought out for her to eat, thought out enough for her to eat so she won't burn herself. Now we have to remember one step at a time. So after she eats 
if she's good, I'm not gonna change the enclosure because that could possibly freak her out even more. So if she eats and she's good, it was just that she's a mouser. If she eats or if she doesn't eat, then we know we gotta move on to the next step, which is the enclosure. It's been about a week. She hasn't fed again. She ate last on Sunday. Today is Monday. She hasn't ate. So we're gonna try to figure out what's going on. So the plan for storm is, first things first, we're gonna check the enclosure, see if anything's inside of there that's alive or maybe bothering her that I can remove on a personal level today right now. Second thing we gotta do is head on over to the pet shop, check to see if they have any mice. If they do, we'll go ahead and feed her the frozen thawed mice. We'll thaw it out for four hours, see how that goes. Third step, we're gonna do if she doesn't eat, but if she does eat, we're not doing anything else, she's good to go. Third step we're gonna do is we're gonna clean the enclosure. If she did not eat, we're gonna go ahead and clean the enclosure, make sure everything's sanitary, put her back in, give her about a couple of days so she can figure out her habitat. Then we're gonna to attempt to try to feed her that frozen thawed one more time, or a different frozen thawed one more time. If she eats at that point, then we're good. If not, we gotta relocate her because obviously Stryker and Joker are affecting her hormones and her ability to thrive. So we're gonna to have to move her and get her moved out and put in another place. I think Storm just wants to explore. So what I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna take her out, I'm gonna allow my daughter to play with her, I'm gonna allow my daughter to uh, handle her, not lose her, at the same time, I'm gonna go ahead and jump in the closure. I'm gonna see what's going on, see if there's anything I can clean. Maybe I can disinfect the hides just to keep them a little cleaner than normal. Uh, maybe that's bothering her. Maybe there's something in there that's really bothering her. Maybe she's compacted, so we gotta figure out if that's the issue. If she's not eating after we did all that, then we obviously know, because we did all everything we could, uh, we obviously know it's something in, internal, then we have to take her over to the vet, find out how to fix it. If it's not that, then I, I don't know at that point. However, we haven't gone that far. We're gonna take it one step at a time. We're not gonna overthink this thing. We're gonna pop through it. We're gonna make sure Storm survives. We're gonna take it to the fullest. It is our duty as pet owners to understand what's wrong with our pets and we have to do it in a manner that doesn't affect the pet long term. Short term, it can. I can put her in a tub. I can put her in a little tote box. I can put her somewhere else that'll make her comfortable for a couple of hours while I go ahead and clean out the enclosure or try to figure out what's wrong with the enclosure. And we're at that point, we've done all we could and it's up to the vet to try to fix the situation for us. That's why we pay them. So with all that being said, if you have any issues with your ball python, definitely stay tuned for tomorrow's video. I'm going to go ahead and link a uh, a video up here about how ball python, how to get your ball python eating again, the three steps. They're broken down in three different steps after that. I should have put them all together, but I wasn't thinking clearly. I'm kind of kind of off a little bit on that one. However, go ahead and check it out if you haven't. I definitely recommend it's a good video. It's a good uh, bit of it, um, a bit of value for you to understand, to put ingest what you need to do, take it one step at a time, try to figure it out on your own. If you can't wait for me tomorrow, then you can go ahead and look at it today, try to figure it out starting today, now, if you have the opportunity to. However, with all that being said, guys, I'll see you in tomorrow's video. <laughs>